Hey everybody, Josh here. Welcome back to the channel where I talk about IT, cybersecurity, education, and career things. And in today's video, I'm going to be answering a question from a viewer. Basically, they ask, can you possibly do a video comparing the BS in cloud computing versus the master's in cybersecurity as I'm trying to see which one would be a better path to take as I have a bachelor's in marketing and associates in business, but I'm trying to break into tech and I want to see what is the best way to do it. And in my opinion, I thought this was like a really strange comparison because like the bachelor's in cloud versus like a master's, it's like, it's kind of hard to compare because of the course set, but it has like a lot of people wanting me to do it. Um, and I thought fair enough. So I'll go ahead and do this comparison and break it down. But before that, consider following me on Instagram. I try to post a lot of content there every day to give you something nice and interesting to look at. Currently, I'm living in Japan and working out of here. And like, as you can see, my current Airbnb, I'm kind of sitting on the floor because there's no desk here for some reason. But uh, I try to post interesting things there. Check it out and back to the content of this video. So basically, um, this thing is kind of noisy to look at, so you'll have to bear with me while I kind of explain it a little bit, but I'm going to try to break it down in a bunch of different ways. So basically, I'm going to compare four different ways, I guess, to complete what we're talking about here. And we're going to talk about them in terms of cost, like the dollar cost, um, how long it might take, and as well as how many job hits for each program depending on how you do the programs, if that makes sense. So basically, um, I'll just talk about the bachelor's in science cloud computing track, and we're just going to assume we're talking about Azure because I tend to like Azure. So basically, if you if you go through the bachelor's in science and cloud computing and you you only do you only use WGU, you don't use study.com and we're going to assume that you you're completing eight classes per term. So WGU, it's an online accredited university. You pay for a term at a time. A term is six months and you're allowed to complete as many classes as you can in that six month time period. So this is assuming you do the cloud computing bachelor's degree and you complete eight courses per term, you'll end up going through five terms and each term is $3,790. So each six month period, $3,790. So you'll end up spending up just under $19,000 for the cloud computing bachelor's degree, assuming that it takes five terms. Five terms is about 2.5 years. So you'll end up spending two and a half years. And um, these are the certs that you get in the Azure track for cloud computing. Um, I kind of, this score basically is, I just went to Indeed and I searched, for example, for the Azure Data Engineer cert, I just searched Azure Data Engineer with quotes, and then this is how many jobs came out. So that's kind of where the score came from. So for example, DevOps Engineer in Indeed had 7,500 hits essentially, and CompTIA Security Plus at the time had 5,282 hits. And I kind of tallied all of those up. I didn't include ITIL because it has like so many hits and I just feel like whatever, like you can include it if you want, but I didn't include it, but I just wanted to show that here. So basically, if you're looking at cloud computing track, purely WGU, about $19,000, about two and a half years to complete. Assuming you don't, assuming you don't transfer any credits in, and a job hit score of around twenty thousand, and then this this column here is basically the same thing, but we're going to use Study.com to complete as many courses as you can. The idea behind this is. For example, if you click on this, if you use study.com to complete a lot of prerequisites and like core courses at study.com and then transfer them into WGU, um, if especially if you use the discount code here of Josh Matacor, you end up saving a quite a bit of money because study.com is cheaper per, per month essentially than WGU. It's a huge savings. So this is the cloud computing degree. This column is all the different classes that you can do at study.com that transfers into this degree. So assuming you do all of these, in the end, you only have 22 more classes to complete a WGU. So that's why it ends up being a bit cheaper. So assuming you do as many classes as you can at study.com, transfer them into WGU, and then do the rest at WGU, pretty much everything else is the same, except for you have a, a little bit over $5,000 savings if you go the study.com route. Um, I'll check out this video as well. It goes in depth about how to actually do classes at study.com and transfer them into WGU. So check out this video. I won't go into it too in too much depth on this video, but I use I use study.com, saves a lot of money, saves a lot of time too. So check out that video. So pretty much everything the same, um, two and a half years, a certific certification score of 20,000, um, but with a total cost of just under $14,000 as opposed to $19,000 with purely WGU route. So these are the two bachelor's degrees, pretty much the same. Um, one is cheaper if you study.com. And then we're going to do two different cybersecurity routes. This is master's of science, cybersecurity, information assurance. 
So basically the first route is if you do, you just do everything inside of WGU, right? So you take all the courses, which I believe is, it's about 11 courses. And we're gonna assume four courses per term at for the master's level, because the courses are a, a little bit more involved. Each term for the master's is $4,295 as I'm making this course. So assuming you take three terms to complete the master's, you'll end up paying about a little bit under $13,000, so $12,870. It will probably take you about a year and a half if you're if you're going at a super average pace. Um, I actually have this degree, but I, I was already deep in cyber and like I had a lot of experience in search already when I took it. So I, I completed it really, really fast. But maybe the average person maybe take like a year and a half, right? At four courses per term, which just seems reasonable enough. Um, there's only two certifications. Well, technically there's one certification in this degree, which is CEH, it's Certified Ethical Hacker. And I believe you have the option to take the CHFI, which is like a digital friend certification and these are the search scores for this so at the time when i searched ceh on indeed got 2800 hits and chfi 304 hits for a total score of 3111 another way or another option that you have to complete the masters of science and Cybersecurity information assurance is if you actually complete cissp beforehand cissp is a big information security cert i actually have a video on it where i talk about it in depth um, i actually have this cert and it, it, it took me a while to get i would say the cert is harder than the whole master's degree to be honest at WGU but if you end up getting the certification ahead of time like on your own it actually satisfies two of the courses in the master's degree so it kind of brings it down to maybe like eight or nine classes or something like this after you do this because it, it cancels out to the courses so assuming you get cissp on your own like just taking the exam is 699 dollars. so assuming you pass that on your first try and then the rest of the classes if you if you can complete those in two terms that's going to be an additional eight thousand five hundred ninety dollars for a total of nine thousand two hundred and eighty nine dollars actually this should be one year one year so it'll take you one year plus whatever the time it was to take the CISSP and you you we can see we have the same thing C C H C H F I, but the CISSP has a large number of job hits on Indeed and like LinkedIn and those job sites in general so it, it actually brings the certification score up to almost the same as the cloud computing bachelor's degree just because there's so many like hits for CISSP on, on Indeed. I will say the CISSP is probably the best cert for bypassing HR and kind of satisfying that filter when there's like automatic resume scanner scanning your resume. CSSP is really, really, really good. Um, So it's really hard to say, to be honest, if you're like brand new to tech, I I don't really know which one of the, I, I will say, to be honest, if, you, if you're new to tech, no doubt, um, you should kind of think about, I, I don't, I generally, this is kind of a hard one, to be honest, because I generally don't recommend people to get double bachelor's degrees. I just don't think they're that good. But at the same time, like the cloud computing bachelor's degree track has so many useful certs and your technical skill is going to be so much better if you get the bachelor's in cloud computing versus this the master's degree. Like the certs included in the master's degree are like not that good and getting CISSP is it's not that good. It doesn't really give you any skill to be honest. It gives you like a CEO's perspective of information security and it's kind of like a polish if you already have experience in cyber. It will give you like a really nice polish and it will make your resume really appealing to recruiters. But at the same time, the cloud computing degree, like the stuff in it is, it's not even a question it's like way way better than the masters of science and cybersecurity in terms of like ap applicability and, and how useful it is in general so for you i i might not recommend like for for op right because you already have a degree so i might i might not recommend getting another bachelor's degree because you have a degree i might not recommend getting the master's degree because it's just not that good because because you mentioned you're new to tech and it's just like not that great of a thing to do. So what I would recommend is I would, if you really want to get a degree, like go ahead and go for the bachelor's degree, to be honest. But what I would recommend is you pick a few like key certifications from the from the cloud degree, for example, and just do those on your own. Just take your time and do the certifications on your own. Do a few projects, make a nice portfolio and just start applying to jobs, right? That's gonna be the best bang for your buck. You can probably get all the relevant certifications for way under a couple thousand dollars and it's gonna take way less time. It's just going to be better for you. So that's what I would recommend doing. As far as certifications and like which ones to get, depending on how new you are, if you're like new new, I would recommend getting like the Google IT support certification from Coursera. Super low stakes, super easy, and it has like a lot of really good curriculum in it and it's really, 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 really useful. I'd recommend getting Security Plus and then I would move straight into cloud 
code, I would get AZ900, which is Azure Fundamentals. And then I would get AZ104, which I believe is like Azure Sysadmin or something. And if you really want to get another one, I would get AZ500, which is like Azure Security Engineer. And when you do those certifications, you're going to learn a lot about a bunch of different Azure offerings and services and that kind of thing. So what I would do is I'd take those things and just try to do a bunch of little projects with them, maybe create an instance of like a storage account or an app service account and have it like do something on Azure, like store data in the storage blob storage account or something like this, and just make little a bunch of little projects, put them on your portfolio, put your portfolio on your resume and just start applying for jobs. You can do this in, in probably under six months if you try really hard and it's not going to cost that much. Uh, as opposed to like getting a new degree or something. Yeah, I hope this helps. This breakdown was more interesting than I thought it was going to be. It gave me a lot to think about, even though they're kind of two totally different things. So I hope that was useful OP. Let me know what you other people think in the comment section. I feel like people might have a lot to say about this one. Yeah, follow me on Instagram. Again, I try to post a lot of interesting things on there and we will see you in the next video. Bye bye.